Hey gang, John Baccarelli here with Sportsman's Direct, and I'm here to talk to you today about our Sonic Ice Hopper. Many of you guys know that the Sonic Ice Hopper is probably the only reason why we actually started out and became Sportsman's Direct, going back, uh, oh man, probably almost 20 years ago, but a long time anyway. So um, we get asked tons of questions about the ice hopper brackets. And back when I used to be out on the tournament circuit, running around with all these guys, I used to be able to answer a lot of those questions while we were out there and while I was doing seminars. But so we've never really done a thorough video on the different um, ice hopper brackets, how to use them, how to set them up. And so that's what we're going to do here today. I'm going to do my best um, to answer all your questions from over the years. So uh, let's start out by looking at this unit here. This is my personal unit that I used to use when I was out on the tournament circuit. Um, right now it's got an FL22 mounted to it. It's also got a little AquaView Micro mounted down in the middle. Um, and you can see the, uh, the actual uh, camera cable mounted over here on the side. I'm using Hummingbird brackets for that. Um, and the Hummingbird brackets can actually be used to mount the, some different uh, um, camera systems too by, by Vexilar as well. But anyway, so you got the two rod holders mounted up front. Um, this is mounted on our Ice Hopper Pro system, which is our current unit um, that uh, the telescopes in and out and folds. And this is mounted on a uh, hopping bucket rig uh, bucket, which uh, is, I think, probably one of the more popular ways that guys will uh, mount their battery. But we'll get into all the different aspects of that in a minute but we're gonna talk about just the basic units that we offer first, and then we're gonna come back to the different, to the different, um, uh, different setups. All right, so here we've got our two basic units that we offer currently. Uh, the, the SP, which is our sport unit, which is our short unit, and then our pro series unit, which um, the SP is going away after this year. So once this guy is sold out this year, it's, it's we're not intended to bring it back. We just the demand for the short unit is just not there, and there's nothing that the short unit can do that this this new Pro Series can't do and do better. So that's why we're really focusing on on the Pro. Um, both of the units were designed to mount and to hold, to I should say, to safely hold um, various flashers that were on the market when we designed them. Doesn't mean that that's all you can do with them, but that's the way they were originally designed. They were designed with about six and an eighth to six and three sixteenth span across the inside of these two these two beams. We call them the main beams. Uh, both the units are designed the same same width, and that was so that you could take your flasher, drop it down inside the unit, and have your electrical connections protected by this V bracket on the bottom here. Now the V bracket also serves the purpose of having your rod holders held out held out on a nice angle so that they're they're easy and, and right in front of you for taking, you know, for retying, for taking fish off, um, all that good stuff. And even for moving from hole to hole, you can leave them in those rod holders when you're running and gunning as well. So um, that's the two basic units. The units all also come with um, one of these little koozies uh, for holding your transducer in place. And over the years, we've changed and we've really settled in on these koozies for, for holding your transducer. And I'll get back into that in a minute as well. Um, one of the other big differences between these two units, so this is a fixed, this little guy is fixed. It only keeps your, your flasher out about six or seven inches from the, uh, the edge of the bucket, whereas our Pro Series will telescope in to keep it in at about six inches, but it'll telescope out all the way to have your unit at about, as far out as about 14 inches from, from your unit, which really from a design, from just a comfort standpoint, puts that unit out in direct line of sight between your eyes, your rod tip, the flasher, and even your hole if you're a sight fisherman. You know, well, I should say if you're, if you're tip watching. Um, but so it keeps everything really in line, which is one of the things, which is one of the reasons why we really developed this shortly after we launched the original SP unit. So uh, this is kind of the Cadillac unit now, which is the Pro, and this is the one we're going to talk about or refer back to um, for the rest of this rest of this video. Because again, the uh, the SP or the Sport Unit will be going away after this year, as soon as inventory is gone on that guy. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit real quick about different mounting options for different units. So.
So let's see. The Hummingbird brackets, these little guys, allow you to mount your Hummingbird, like 30, your ICE 35s, 45s, etc. By mounting these onto those beams on the front, it'll give you a little more space. It's actually about an inch and a half wider on those units. So we needed to come up with something that you could mount your, your Hummingbirds to those brackets as well. This little plate here mounts down on the bottom inside the, inside the ice hopper brackets. Mounts down inside. So this is for you guys that have maybe those X67, those narrower units that are mounted on some sort of a, 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 a small pedestal stand that will allow you to mount them down inside. So um, it just was another option for you guys. The whole pattern on here may or may not match your different unit. You might have to drill a couple of holes to get it to mount, but the idea was it would allow you guys to mount down inside the bracket assembly. You'd still be protecting all your electronics. So it just gives you a versatility um, to do that. And our latest bracket that we have, and this will, for all you guys that are running pan optics and running these bigger units, you've been cobbling different brackets to mount onto, onto here. We wanted to give you a nice big platform this year. It's a big and sturdy platform. So this guy is our new universal top mount, and it's literally a clean slate. So it, it mounts right up on top, you can see, on top of the bracket, real simple, two quarter 20 screws go in and mount to it. Drill whatever holes you want up on here to match your gimbal mount or whatever bracket you're putting on there, and you've got a lot of room. It's over four inches wide, but you got like 24 square inches up here to mount your electronics to. And this is beefy, so it's not going anywhere. It's very precision bent, so once it's, once it's screwed on here, it's gonna be really stable and strong and it doesn't affect your, any of your maneuverability in and out on the, on the assembly at all. So this is your universal top mount that is new for this year. So for you guys that are mounting any of the bigger units that would not fit on our existing units, this is what you're gonna wanna order. All right, so now let's get back to my unit here and what I've got set up on it and different options, different, and then we'll, the last thing we're gonna talk about is different battery options for you guys. So if you've got questions about the batteries and where you're gonna mount those, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, one other quick thing I should talk about here is that I know I've seen a lot of guys running around with our units that actually don't have them set up the way we intended. If you'll notice the line or I should say the handle, whether you're using your own bucket or whether you're using one of these on this hopping bucket rig, needs to be bisecting your unit. So like literally I'm behind it now, right? And the reason for that is the idea is that you're gonna mount your battery opposite your unit for a counterbalance. If you were to rotate this the other way, the unit would be tipping and flopping all over the place. But since it's mounted, it's gonna balance this way, okay? So that is one key thing that I wanted to bring up that I have seen that, that, that the way guys have their units set up and it's really awkward that way because your unit is flipping and flopping all over. Now, with that said, the battery was also intended to be opposite your flasher because of tippiness, right? Which is the same thing about carrying it. You don't want it flopping all over. So with more and more guys that have now gone to lithium ion batteries, which changes, the, it changes the, the, the whole cantilever design of our unit, we had to come out with what we call a kickstand. So this is our kickstand. This was, our, this was our, our fix for all you guys that wanted to run and gun with a lightweight lithium ion battery and were having trouble with your unit tipping over. And the kickstand, I'm not gonna mount it here right now, but you can see that it, it mounts right into those, those thumb knobs for your um, used on your Pro for setting up your um, the distance and travel. Theoretically, you could mount it all the way out here as well, but if you, if you mounted it out here where your flasher was set up, then you'd be, you'd be kind of, you'd be kind of pushing up on your unit and would always want to fold. So that's why you really want to mount it back here at your adjustment points for your, for your thumb knobs. So, and once that's mounted on there, it acts as a really nice, you know, anti-tip mechanism. But again, that it's generally just for you guys that are running the lithium ion batteries on this unit. And um, usually the way that I would get around it is I just throw some extra tackle down in the bottom of my bucket 
and then, then I was good to go. I didn't have to worry about counterbalance. But I know it was an issue, so we did come out with the kickstand assembly for you guys. So that, that helps to, to fix that issue. So other things that, that we've seen and been asked questions about, we talked about the Hummingbird brackets again. You can see those mounted here. And, I, and I'm using them in this case to actually hold my, my cable assembly for my AquaView Micro that's mounted down here in the middle. Um, we got the two rod holders mounted on here. You could, route, you could mount rod holders in other places. I've, this unit has got a tri-beam on it um, from Vexilar. So I've got the tri-beam mounted on some of these, these uh, auxiliary holes that are also um, pre-drilled on your, on your flat or on the, uh, the main beam bracket. Talk about the transducer holder here. So talk about flashers here real quick in your transducers. The weakest point on your transducer is going to be this point right here where your, your transducer cable goes down into, into your actual transducer. I won't get into all the technical details why that's a weak spot, but suffice it to say, a lot of your failures, if you get one, is going to come right there. So our, by using these koozies, and we've had different ways of holding the transducers over the years, this is by far the best most convenient, safest, and also the, the easiest for us to, to get our hands on um, for you guys to keep your transducer safe. So it, it holds that cable centered, and so it keeps your transducer up and down pretty vertical, and it also protects it from, from banging around and maybe getting chipped or, or dinged or scratched, and we don't want that when we get all that money tied up in these units. So that's our transducer holder. You can move this thing around wherever it's comfortable for you on the bracket. Um, you could move it forward. Some guys will hang it off the center, the center beam. This is a big triducer, so it's easier for me to mount it off here on the side rather than trying to snake it through all of my, my assembly and my cable there. And that's the nice thing about, about our units, okay? One of the nice features is it is aluminum. There's holes all over the place. You can customize this thing and move things around and, and really make it your own design. If you want to drill holes in it, again, it's aluminum. If you want to mount um, all kinds of other things to it, um, lights and, you know, charging pods and, and stuff, you can. So kind of the sky is the limit for what you can do. Um, now let's talk again a little bit about the transducer and the transducer cable. This is another one of those things that I've seen, I think a lot of people don't understand or didn't understand the design intent and we weren't very good at explaining it. But when you buy one of our units, you get one of these little red pieces of Velcro. So it should come shipped to you with that little piece of Velcro down on that, down on that V bracket up in the front. And that, that little piece of Velcro is there so that you can tie off your, your cable. Now, when you're running and gunning, that ice, those ice conditions are generally fairly consistent. Not always, but generally fairly consistent. So once you get your transducer distance set up the way you like it in your hole, then you can run and gun with confidence that it's always going to be at that same depth. I never use the float that comes with the different transducers. It's just, that's not the way. I don't like it floating around in my hole. I like it in one spot in my hole, and I don't like having that, that foam taking up all that room. So what I've gotten used to doing is I set my depth, and the way that I set my depth and get it pretty darn close to where I want it is I do a V-wrap. And you also notice these little, these little red um, vinyl tabs on the, on the aluminum. The reason those are there is so that when you wrap your cable, they're not into metal, so you're not um, going to cut your, your cables on these little aluminum prongs that are sticking up here. So we do a little V-wrap on here until we get the depth to where, to where we want it. And this is kind of awkward going backwards here like this. But if you bear with me. If that was the depth I wanted my my cable at, I would set, I would just wrap it up and hook up my Velcro and now my depth is set on there. The other way that I've done it and in tournaments, if I was fishing a lot of variable ice and I was having to change a lot, I would take a clothespin and stick it here in the middle and then it was just really easy to pop on and off and it, you know, it, it worked great too and it was a lot faster. So if I was out in variable conditions, maybe I was fishing ice that was one layer, two layers, three layers thick, and so I had to be constantly changing my cable length, then, then, then the clothespin was, was easier to use. But if you're running around out there and it's pretty stable, 
then then use that use that velcro that we provide with it and you'll be good to go i guess i'll talk a little bit about this specific unit or this type of unit for the for the battery since since I am kind of done with with all of that um, this unit right now is mounted on an HBR this is one of our older older HBRs um, and the way that the design intent with this is that you've got a top bucket for fish and whatever accessories you want and then you've got a bottom bucket that has your battery down inside of it so your battery is down inside with a battery spacer down in there and that battery spacer keeps your battery positioned opposite of your keeps it positioned opposite of your unit for counterbalance your power cable runs through a hole that we provide on the HBR and down inside there's enough clearance between the two buckets so that the cable doesn't get pinched and there's also enough room for this to be hanging you know, hanging your for your ice hopper to be hanging inside the inside the unit now you've also got additional storage down in there between between the two buckets at least like three to four inches of extra storage so we consider it relatively dry storage because your other bucket is up on top and so it's really hard for any any water you know to, to get up inside that that second bucket now we're going to do a little bit of I'm just going to show you how this thing folds here. I'm going to get behind it. This is a little harder to do on a table than it would be to do in person, and I got a lot of extra stuff on here, so hopefully I don't break anything in the process. So I'm going to rotate it up. And again, now I'm obviously not fishing right now, so this is, I don't care about the transducer hanging up in the air. But what I wanted to show you is how your unit now is sitting facing you. So if you can imagine if I'm in a shanty and I can look over the top of this bucket and I can see my flasher still. So if we're running and gunning, I don't need to take my flasher unit and pull it off and mount it inside my shanty. I don't need to take it off of my bucket. We used to sell shanty brackets and we still probably have them on the website for, so for the guys that want to mount their unit to the to the actual shanty itself, but quite honestly, this is way superior because now you're you're mobile. So you've got you've got your your unit where you can where you can see it, and it's up and out of the way. It's also up and out of the way for transport, and it's and it's also locked in this position. So if you're running around on your on your uh, on your snowmobile and you've got your unit in the back. Um, some guys will put a cover over top of here of some sort, a bag or something to keep all the snow and everything from getting all over the unit. But it's, it's, it's much more compact. Even in your car, throwing it in the, the back of your, your SUV or whatever, your unit's not sticking out in front. It's, it's up and it's out of the way and it's much more secure and protected like this. And it's also less tippy, um, because it's not, you don't have that cantilever effect of it, of it hanging out forward. So, this is again one of the advantages to the Ice Hopper Pro over the original um, SP units is the ability to to fold like that. And I'll also mention that when I'm really running and gunning, and I'm not even sitting down, maybe I'm standing over the unit, I can rotate I can rotate the the flasher if I loosen this guy up, and I get some of these cables out of the way, or even even if it even as it's sitting right here, I can see my unit while I'm standing over top of my unit, um, much better, it's much closer to my face. Maybe it's really windy out and I wanna kneel alongside of, of, my, of my bucket and block the wind because I don't have a shanty with me and the bite is really light. So in that case, I'm up alongside of my unit and I'm kneeling and I've got that flasher right in my face so I can really fine tune my presentation in those windy, lousy conditions and block the wind out of my hole with my bucket and everything so this is another way that I like to use this the other thing I'll mention here this kind of just a little side note our rod holders since they are only mounted with one hole you can rotate them up like this so when you're when you have the the, the ice hopper in this configuration where it's folded up 90 degrees you can still use your rod holders to, to hold your rods you just got to remember that you can rotate them up and out of the way so um, it's just another nice 
kind of feature. There's a lot of thought that went into this, into these assemblies when I designed them. So I tried to compensate for all different applications because I was using the thing. So as we as we ran into different problems, we solved them um, by our design. So now let's talk. We're going to talk more about battery um, storage. So this is the HBR again. Um, this is our, our current units are a five gallon bucket with a four gallon bucket stacked on top. So your your five gallon buckets down on the bottom with your battery spacer. And uh, you saw how the battery was rotated on its side. That's another critical point of the of the design on here is that the battery is actually sitting on its on its side rather than you know vertical. And that's what helps lock it into place against that spacer. The spacer's actually got a little tab in coming through from the front of the bucket too. Um, it's a little little pin that sticks inside there, so it keeps that spacer from rotating all around inside inside the bucket as well. But now we're going to talk more about other options you might have if you don't want the hop-in bucket rig to stow your battery. There are other ways to stow your battery. All right, so we just got an ordinary five-gallon bucket here. There's nothing special about this bucket. We've got a battery. This is just your, your normal flasher battery. This is a lead acid, so it's pretty heavy. And then we've got this gizmo here, which we call our original battery sling. So the original battery sling is just that. And this is, this is an old one off of one of my other units that one of my kids has used for, for many years. So it is a little bit tangled up right now. But here's the basic premise, the way this works. Your battery is going to mount and it's going to hang inside the bucket, which is this was one of the this was the original way we came up with for for stowing your for stowing your battery on our units because you know that, that was a big deal. We wanted to have the bucket usable. So putting the battery down in the bottom of the bucket, I don't want to be throwing fish on top of my battery. So I, I want I mean it'd be a mess, right? I mean an elect electrical mess as well. So we came up with this battery sling design and I will try to get this thing it's got velcro and everything so it's a little bit hard to but the way that it works is your battery literally goes down and hangs inside the bucket and you got two straps coming out of the battery sling now you want your handle set up in line with your battery. Again, you want the battery opposite your flasher. So your unit, your electronics is going to go over here. Your battery is going to be back here. So it was kind of a, a neat idea that we came up with to do this. It was kind of one of those one of those epiphany moments. But the way it works is once you you got that extra leg hanging here, this extra strap, you got these two legs. going to have it back here. You're going to run the strap through. So now you see you see the configuration, right? Where it's kind of like a pair of suspenders, right? And then real simply, we're just going to connect the strap, the velcro Once that Velcro is connected, if you can see, now you're hanging inside. And the strap can't go anywhere, okay, because it's going to pull up against the lip of the bucket. You can, I don't care what kind of bucket you have, there's a lip on it somewhere. And we're going to take our battery, we're going to put it in there. I'll show you this after I get it in. It's got a little flap on it. But, I mean, your battery, see how it's kind of suspended in there? But if I go this way, right, it's suspended in there. And it's adjustable. So you can adjust how high you want it in the bucket. You can adjust it all the way up. You can adjust it down low. But the point is, your battery is there now. And in most cases, even the seats that you're going to snap on the top will snap over, over these two little pieces of strap that are in there. So the straps really don't get in the way very much. If they were to, I guess you could trim trim your seats. Ice fishermen are really good at doing creative stuff to, to, to get around problems like that. But that's the battery sling, and that'll work with any bucket. So that was our original way to fix the battery stowage issue. 
Hey, if you like this video content and you want to get updated as soon as the next video is out there, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon and you'll get notified as soon as the next video is up.